Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is the October 15th meeting of the Auburn School Building Committee. Uh, it's now 725, a little late starting to just get there at quorum. Uh, if I could open it with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. All right, uh, this meeting is being recorded. I ask if anybody in the audience is recording. I uh, don't have anybody. Okay, um, first item on the agenda is uh, citizens' comments. I don't have any of those. Uh, before we get to the approval of the minutes, uh, I'd like to just express my own personal gratitude to uh, all the uh, committee members that spent uh, Saturday and a good part of a Tuesday night to interview all the uh, CM candidates and stuff. And um, we've got to good spot so we only get uh, I think it's 22 months plus or minus left before we're putting kids into the school so giddy up and let's go <laughs> um, next item on the agenda is the uh, approval of meeting minutes we have uh, uh, several on here we have uh, from the September 24th uh, meeting we're gonna take that one first I entertain a motion to approve. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, any comments? Issues with it? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It's a vote. Uh, the next one is the uh, meeting minutes of October 5th. Um, this is the first day of the uh, interviews. Um, I'll make a motion to approve them. Okay. Second? Second. All right. Uh, any discussions? Concerns? All right. All those in favor? Aye. All right. I am abstaining because I wasn't there. Uh, okay. The next one is the uh, meeting minutes for the October 8th. Um, the second night of the uh, interviews and the uh, final uh, tallying of votes and stuff from the members for uh, finalists. I make a motion. Okay. And do we have a second? Second. Any questions, comments? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, I'm abstaining. All right. <clears throat> Next item is a proposed additional services. Dale, you want to run through this? Or? Yeah. Um, we have in front of you. You have to get up there to, so they can hear you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, what you have in front of you is uh, a flow test. And this is required to look at pressure out in the street. Uh, we looked at it. We think it's fair. Um, we would recommend approving it. The quote should be in the, in the booklet or the package there. That's a Cogswell sprinkler? Yep, Cogswell, exactly. I'll make a motion to approve the flow test. Okay. Second? Second. Any questions, comments, concerns? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? It's a vote. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I said approved. Okay. Oh. We had a bill. No, it's a, it's a test to come forward. Okay. Next item on is the uh, OPM's update uh, report on where we have CMs and stuff. Yeah. <coughs> Okay, um, just to um, just go back, because I know some of you weren't here throughout the whole entire process. Um, so the CM selection process, we went out um, into the marketplace. We had a good turnout. Um, we went through a technical review with the subcommittee, and uh, from there we went through interviews, which you know, Mark just talked about on October 5th, Saturday, as well as the 8th of last week. Um, so we basically went through all the interviews, and after the interviews, um, we had a discussion amongst the uh, school building committee. And then we voted, and uh, Fontaine Brothers was, uh, came in ranked number one, uh, where Gilbane is number two. From that meeting, um, a motion was made for Skansko to go back to Fontaine and talk about their fee proposal. And what you have in front of you is a spreadsheet here that um, shows you the original budget. Um, and again, just so, just so it's clear, when you look at a CM fee proposal, it's all the categories. Just don't look at like the fee, 
general conditions, general requirements, because they can move money around. So what we did is, and if you remember, we had that little cheat sheet on the bottom, you know, full-time equivalent, uh, our illiterate. Um, so we kind of, that's a good gauge that we use, kind of go back and look at it. So just going through this, the original budget, as you can see, it's in, in, in on left-hand column, the 3.5 million. And that's the numbers that, that's been carried throughout the project funding agreement with the state. So that three and a half million is in there. Um, the original proposal came in um, at 3.4. So overall, it's under budget. However, if you look at each line item, uh, for example, pre-construction services, uh, we budget $100,000. Uh, Fontaine, I had 130. Uh, and I'll go through these individually. So basically what I did is I called them. Um, and we're very careful, too, when we go through this process, not to tell them how to staff it or to take, because everybody that was here that presented, that's the team that you guys voted for. They're 100% committed to the project. So what we do is we <coughs> ask them or recommend they go back and just look at staffing, look at costs, and is there any, anything that they could recommend. So that's what they did. I met with uh, Dave Fontaine Jr. yesterday at our office. And the first item there, when you look at the pre-construction, we budgeted 100,000. The number was at 130, and they revised their number down to 96,450. And if you can see on the right-hand side, there's a variance, so they reduced about $33,000. And the note over there, basically, originally when they looked at the pre-construction services, they anticipate six months. So say they start in November, and if you remember from the interview, their goal, which I think is very doable, is to start you know, moving dirt in March time frame. So it gives them about four months. And pre-con does go throughout. So anyways, they came back and said, we feel comfortable within four months we can do the pre-construction services. And if you remember, pre-con, um, so once the contract's signed, they have about three weeks to put an estimate together. So what they're going to do, they're going to take Larry Bagano's drawings and specifications, <coughs> And they're going to put their own numbers together, go out to the marketplace, use consultants, you know, in-house, everything that they talked about. So in about three weeks from where the contract signed, they're going to do a presentation to the committee, and they're going to line it up against the budget that we have. So that's the main goal. So, so from an estimating perspective, they owe that initially. They own 60% and at 90% drawing development. So throughout the project, they're going to keep tracking where the costs are. Um, another thing that they're going to do for pre-con is value engineering. So as they go through, and I think you heard from uh, Steve Fontaine, you talked about the structure of the gymnasium. There may be opportunity to reduce the steel weight costs over and so on. That's something they're going to come to us. We'll go to the design team and the structural engineers and MEPs, whatever that line item is, to make sure it's acceptable. And then we'll present to the committee to say, here's an opportunity. Um, is it cost savings? Is it schedule savings? Is there something other reason why they're recommending it? So that's the other main thing they're doing for pre-con. Uh, schedule, again, that's a major uh, part, too. They gave us... Um, if you remember in the um, submission, they gave us a detailed schedule, how we're coming to 7-7 of 2015. They're going to take Larry Bergano's um, um, deliverables for the drawings and incorporate that. So they're going to build a very detailed schedule for us, which also will be part of their contract. So, so again, you know, so they basically feel that they can do all that in four months, which, you know, we feel comfortable with as well. So, again, we said okay, and we didn't, you know, disagree. But the, the same people are involved, the same commitment, the same level. Um, I received an email from Fontaine this morning saying they're 100% committed. So, you know, just to show that they you know, really want to work with the town on this. So the next line item, um, general conditions. Again, this is general conditions are the cost of the employees in the field, the office, the accountants, everybody that was here. And as you can see, originally they were about 100 or about 80,000 under budget. I asked them to go back and just kind of reevaluate everything. The APM is an assistant project manager. Um, Jamie, who is, the, who is the guy that was here, the project manager, he's a pilot, well qualified. He has two assistants that are going to help him throughout the project. So they went back and said, okay, we don't really need, I think they had a person in there for like 60% of the time, another one for 40. This maybe we could back off 10% of one of the assistants. So Jamie, without question, is 100% on this project from the day it starts to the end. Um, and also, the other one was the, in the field, you met the superintendent. If you remember, they had another assistant who wasn't here. Both of them were budgeted full time throughout the entire project. So they went back and said, all right, do we need, we need the main super, but the assistant super, do we need them full time? And you'll see over on the right hand side where I said, you know, they originally had them for 16 months. They felt comfortable with having the assistant super for 14 months. Um, so I think the thinking is that on the early part of this, when they're doing, you know, some site work, they only have, you know, one trade, maybe two out here. Don't need two full time guys watching. Um, the next line item, again, their fee, that's fixed, that's non-negotiable. So again, that number is just carried across. And then the next one is the um, construction services, um, or I'm sorry, the other one is general uh, requirements. And general requirements is basically the non-labor related stuff. And as you can see over there, it's the CM and OPM office cost reduced. And what that is, is that they have trailers out in the, in the site. 
Uh, the superintendent's offered to use this building where we, being the OPM, can sit here. They've also, I've asked Fontaine if they felt comfortable working out of this building. They haven't committed to that yet, so the money, there's still money in there for a field trailer for them. Their concern is that they want to be able to manage the safety of the site, which is once they have the site fence in, they own it. They own the safety, they own everything in that fence. So they want to really look at this to say, okay, if a visitor comes in, can they control, you know, sign in, make sure they have hard hats, and what, what are they doing, how long they're going to be here. So, again, that's something that we can still go back to them on. So we left the money in there. So overall, um, you know, from the original to where they are now, they're about $132,000 reduced. Um, we went through this. We think there's enough money in there to manage it for everything that they talked about. Um, we feel, you know, I think this is fair. Again, if you look at the project, you know, they're probably right around overall percentage. You know, they could be around 9% all in with all their, all their uh, uh, fees and stuff. So I don't know if there's any questions. So no. if, if there's no questions, what I would recommend, and again, I, I would recommend approving Fontaine. If you would make a motion to have your OPM draft a letter for the town manager, to, and again, the, the, the contract's between the town and Fontaine, I can draft a letter, I can send it out through the superintendent, whoever you want to go through. So town manager can send it to Fontaine, say, you know, we're, we're in agreement, they'll attach all the supporting documentation. Uh, the next step is Fontaine will put the contract together, they get all the bonding and all the stuff, all the exhibits, you know, the, the, their detailed um, uh, schedule, all the stuff that's in the RFQ and everything that we've asked them to do. And then it goes to the town, which we'll review too before the, we would recommend having the you know, town manager sign off on it. They'll sign off on it, being the town. We give it back to Fontaine, and then I think the next step is for them to come in and, you know, at the next school building committee meeting, meet this committee here and, you know, talk about what they're going to do and what, how fast they're going to do it for us. So. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second? Second. Okay. Uh, any discussions? Questions? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. So. Thank you. Um, the next one, I'm going to turn this over to Eric in a minute, and Eric's going to, we, with the MSBA, we have a submission that's coming up on October 23rd, which is next Thursday. Um, this is the design development submission, so it's everything we've done to date, all the drawings, everything that's been updated, everything that you've seen here and on, uh, through the links if you used it. Um, that goes in next week, which also includes a budget update. Um, our estimators are still going through the budget, so as you can see the motion down there, um, we feel pretty comfortable with the construction number, that we will not exceed that. Uh, we can meet next week and give it to you if you like, or if you want to make that motion after Eric goes through his presentation, that as long as we're under that 37.7 number. And again, that number there is all the construction, all the contingency for construction, it's all construction related, all the alternates, everything is in there. So we're. What we're trying to do is once that's submitted, I can share the summary to this group if you would like to see it. Um, we just want to, you know, again, we can meet next week if you want, but we'll just come in and look at the updated budget. Yes, yeah, all, yeah that's a good point. All, all their fees and everything's in there. And again, that's a good point. If you look at the original, what we budget and what Fontaine's at, this 300000 comes out of this number right off the top because of their general conditions. And as you know, as you know the, the fees are a calculation so long as when that construction number comes down, their fees also will come down with it. And other, you know, like um, construction contingency monies uses a percentage. So yes, to answer your question, it's in there. I'll uh, turn it over to Eric. As Dale mentioned, we'll, we'll be uh, sending this, this submission into MSBA next Wednesday. Um, it it's, it's consists mo mostly of uh, drawings and specifications, and a hard copy was, uh, was delivered to the building committee last Tuesday. Uh, there is also on, our, on LPA's FTP site, we've made that the drawings and specifications available in uh, electronic format and PDF format to the committee. I think everyone got a, a, um, an email from Mary Ellen with instructions on how to access that. If, if anybody needs that again, just let us know and we can, uh, we can send that out again. Um, in addition to the drawings and specs, there are uh, a few other additional items. There's uh, uh, other deliverables include meeting memos. Uh, there's some narratives that describe the various systems. Uh, and, and pretty much updates from anything that's changed since schematic design, anything that's uh, 
in terms of the room data sheets, uh, you know, the land acquisition, you finalize that, so we're including those documents. Um, the total project budget, once we have that, that number uh, reconciled, um, we've done some additional soils testing, so we'll include those things as well and find, find that all together. Um, following the, the uh, submission, the DD submission, we'll, be, uh, we'll also be starting the uh, site permitting process. And the, this, the project is subject to site plan review, so we've had some meetings with the uh, town's development coordinating group and started that, that process informally and we'll, we'll be making a formal submission uh, on the 24th uh, so that we can get on their, their agenda for the November meeting. Um, so I thought tonight uh, you've, you've, uh, you've seen most of the graphics I'm, I'm going to show you. We've concentrated a lot on floor plans and uh, two-dimensional drawings so far, but I thought tonight I would, I, I would bring some actual materials, samples that we've uh, specified and, and kind of show you what we're proposing in some of the uh, main areas. Um, one thing, you, you'll see colors tonight. We're not selecting colors tonight. Uh, this is really just to show you the, uh, the the type of material that we specified. That'll be a that color selection process will be a uh, a completely separate process once we have submittals from all from the uh, contractor for all of the uh, materials in the building. We'll we'll put those together and put together a cohesive uh, color color board for it, for your approval. So uh, to start with. Uh, Thought we'd start with this band coral area, and I'll pass these around as I as I go along. Um, in, the, uh, in the band room, we we uh, on the ceilings we're using this this metal panel, and what we try and do is to to get a. Uh, we, we want a combination of absorptive materials and reflective materials. And this is a metal panel. You can see it's wedge-shaped. And these, these go up. 50% of the ceiling will be used with this seal, with this uh, panel. And it, what it does is it reflects the, the uh, sound in, in various directions. So pass that, that around. We're also using this, this, uh, this material. And throughout the school, we'll be using this material as a sound absorptive material on the walls, both in the, uh, the band room as well as uh, the uh, cafeteria in places and the, uh, the lobby, up high in the lobby. Um, and this will be mounted on the walls. You can see there's clips there that uh, that's used to uh, absorb, absorb sound. Um, at the media center, I, I, uh, I brought a sample of uh, some of the, the uh, carpeting. Um, I watched the meeting, uh, oh, excuse me, I'm hitting all kinds of buttons here. Um, I, I, there were some comments about the durability of the, the carpet and uh, what we usually specify is a six foot wide sheet good. Um, this is a, a vinyl backed carpet. It, it's uh, very durable. We've, we've had this in, in uh, in place in, in schools uh, 20 years old and it's, uh, it's held up very well, no, no, uh, no issues. Um, the nice thing about that is the, uh, the vinyl backing actually encapsulates the fibers so it, you, can, you can use a uh, uh, water extraction process to clean it and it doesn't break down the, uh, the backing and, and cause the fibers to come out. Also in the media center, uh, we've got some open grid ceiling. Um, you can see the uh, typical ceiling <coughs> will be a, uh, an acoustical ceiling tile, uh, tegular edge ceiling tile with a typical grid. Um, we're showing these uh, pendant mounted lights and what they, they're indirect direct. Uh, they, they project light down to some degree, 15, 10, 15% 15 down, but most of the light is directed upward against the ceiling and it reflects off and illuminates the room without actually seeing the light or seeing a, a lens. So it's a very even way of lighting a room. I can uh, 
we, we also sh show these uh, over certain areas, like this uh, this uh, small meeting area and the circulation desk. We've we've got some uh, feature ceilings and kind of an open grid system with a uh, an edge that would uh, look like this, and that ties into the uh, into an open grid system. Um, you can also see here we've we've shown some of the millwork uh, start started to develop some millwork uh, a, a circulation desk which is a semicircular uh, desk here and that would ha also have a some backup uh, wall behind it where where uh, equipment could be stored books and 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 also carts for uh, uh, laptops and tablets and that sort of thing they could be secured and. Uh, charged uh, behind the circulation desk. Um, the lobby, uh, we show a uh, number of uh, materials there. And one of the things uh, I'd like to, like to show you is the, uh, the laminate paneling system. You may re remember that at one point in the, of the project, we had proposed the uh, that the interior of the, the lobby de be treated with brick. So uh, the brick that was outside actually came into the lobby, and we had these these pilasters along the uh, the lobby, um, and that was a value engineering item. We we had changed that to a, a plastic laminate paneling system, which is uh, which is a nice solution for this. Very durable. It's a system uh, we, we can uh, we can get the warmth of wood as you can see here, um, but still have a, a very durable, long-lasting long, uh, long surface. Um, and this is, a, this is a sample of the, uh, that we had put together of, of the panel system. And you can see it's, it's made of these individual panels, and uh, they, they mount, they have a, a backer um, that's used as a reveal strip, and then they mount with these Z-clips. Um, and once once everything's all set and, and uh, set up and, and shimmed just right in place, they, they actually put a little epoxy on there and secure it in place. And if, if anything ever does get damaged, it can be uh, can be dislodged and, and replaced without taking down the entire system. What size are those panels? <clears throat> well, they, they vary. The uh, the pilasters are about uh, um, two feet deep by, by uh, 20 inches wide, um, but the, the panels in the, uh, the center portion would be, would be larger, um, they average about two feet high, and it would be, there would be a, uh, about a one inch reveal between the panels. Um, and we use this where, wherever there's, you know, where, where, where you might touch, uh, touch level, you know, and up above, once you get up above, the, the hot, taller portions of the lobby would be a gypsum board with a with a reveal in the gypsum board, but since it's not going to get that that uh, constant touching and, and uh, uh, abuse, if you will, um, you know that can be a, a painted surface. But any place where where we have the uh, people, a lot of people moving, will move through this lobby and. And up at the uh, at the bridge, you can see we've carried it up to that level and around the stair. That uh, that would be the plastic laminate paneling system. Um, we also have a uh, are proposing a uh, a translucent skylight above, and you can, you can see that uh, full length of the uh, of the lobby. And this is a uh, actually a sandwich panel. Um, uh, one of the brands is uh, Calwall. They've been around for quite a while, and they, they produce this. It's a it's actually an insulated panel, it's a sandwich panel. It's got a very high R value for a skylight. It's not uh, it's not like a clear glass skylight, so it has sun control kind of built into it. <clears throat> but you get a nice diffuse light, and in the uh, at nighttime. Uh, we, we propose to, to project light up onto that, and it will both reflect back off, but it will also give that a nice glow from the exterior. Um, Eric, does, does that set into like a curtain wall track? 
the, the skylight and the panels, like an aluminum track? It, it's like a two-part track. Similar, yeah. It's a thermally broken aluminum track uh, system uh, that there's a there's a like a batten strip that screws over the yeah. top and uh, yes. Thank you. Um, the floor in the uh, lobby is uh, we're proposing a terrazzo tile, <coughs> and you, you may you may be familiar with the existing middle school, which has actual poured in place terrazzo. It's very uh, very durable, as you know, uh, long lasting, easily cleaned, but very costly. Um, to do poured in place terrazzo today. So one of the alternatives is this uh, terrazzo tile. And you can see it's, it comes in a number of uh, modular sizes, 12 by 12 up to uh, <coughs> 24 by 24. And it's, uh, it's made much the same way as, as uh, real terrazzo, but it's in a tile format. And it's a, it's a nice, long-lasting product. Uh, we are also proposing at the, the vestibule, uh, we've used, uh, on occasion, we've used built-in mats with grates, but um, this is a product relatively inexpensive. Uh, it's, a, it's a modular carpet tile that's made specifically for vestibules, which uh, comes in different colors and uh, really stands up well. Um, so you don't need to, to put down uh, Mats at those entrances. That'll cover the full, the full uh, vestibule. Um, at the upper part of the uh, the lobby, we have the stair that that comes up and connects via the uh, the bridge to the uh, to the classroom. And one of the things we we're uh, we're proposing, we show this as a. The, the, in the computer rendering, this is shown as a, a, a pit, just a straight picket uh, guardrail. But what we'd like to do there is uh, something a little nicer for the for, the, for this great main lobby right. stair. And we, we've uh, we have a uh, sample of a, a, a metal mesh that uh, is available uh, in a number of different modules. That's that's just one of. Uh, a number of uh, different designs. It, come, it also can be square mesh or uh, expanded. Um, and that would be a maintenance-free, durable finish. It wouldn't need to be painted, um, long-lasting, strong. Um, so that we would propose that for the, uh, the main, main stair. All of the stairs, <coughs> We would propose to, to go with either a, an aluminum or stainless steel handrail, and this is a this is just a type of the type of post bracket that's used with that. This is a, an aluminum bracket. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize for my cough. I've been waiting uh, this for a few weeks now. Um, this is a, uh, a, a material that that will be very durable. It's, uh, it's a little more expensive than, than just painted steel, but you'll never need to paint it again. Um, steel, steel, painted steel handrails take a lot of abuse. They're constantly being chipped. I've never seen one that, uh, that, that isn't chipped and, and needs, needs repainting. So I, I think in the long run, the, uh, the uh, stainless or aluminum rails will uh, Make make a lot of sense, and that's what we've included in our in our uh, cost estimating. At the uh, cafeteria, we are um, we're carrying the uh, paneling system from the uh, lobby in at the uh, as a, as a band that runs around the entire um, cafeteria. And then also extends up to the wall and ties into these these uh, gypsum board painted gypsum board soffits, which uh, step the ceiling down from the uh, the platform area down to the uh, the perimeter um, perimeter of the room at the uh, exterior wall. We also have uh, are proposing some uh, ceramic tile at the lower. Areas and again, this is a this is an area where you're going to have people with with food uh, with food and, and drink 
Um, you want materials that are durable, easily cleaned. We've had good experiences with the ceramic tile. Um, typically use a uh, <clears throat> A glazed uh, wall tile, which uh, got set around, um, <coughs> available in a large format. Uh, I'm also passing around a rubber tile there. That's that's a uh, a rubber floor tile that um, a very thick, heavy tile um, <coughs> does not does not need to be waxed. It's a it's a little less maintenance. Uh, than, than a v VCT flooring, the lifespan will be greater. It's a little more resilient, comfortable on the feet, um, and it is available in a, a pretty wide range of colors and uh, patterns. So that's a, that's a nice material for the uh, cafeteria. Um, in the kitchen, we, we have a, uh, a scrubbable ceiling panel. Um, the floor in, this, in the kitchen itself would be a, a, a quarry tile floor. <coughs> and the, the cafeteria is kind of unique. It, this is a challenge, uh, a design challenge for us because it's, it's a two it, it's used for two two purposes. It's it's a uh, it's an area where you're going to have food and drink, but it's also a performance area. So the requirements acoustically, in particular, are uh, much different for a performing space. You, you want to have uh, some absorptive materials on the wall, softer materials along the back wall, in particular, and that's not that that's not really the type of uh, materials you want in a in a uh, space where you're going to have food and drink, you want something that's hard, easily clean. So yeah, it's a little bit of a challenge for us here. Um, it, it's one of those things that you, know, you, never, you never have the, uh, the perfect option, but hope it's, it's something that will, will uh, function <coughs> excuse me, on, on a couple of different levels. And then this is again just looking toward the uh, the proscenium op opening. There would be a uh, a, uh, a an operable partition across that because the partition it's the the uh, platform itself will be used as a uh, chorus classroom most of the time. It's a second music room, so that that room is equipped with a marker board projector, much much outfitted much like a typical classroom, um, but it'll also ha have this. Uh, Soundproof partition uh, between it and the and the uh, cafeteria. <clears throat> At the uh, classrooms, the uh, and the corridors, um, we're, we're again using ceramic tile, uh, not not down to the floor, but uh, from the vinyl base up up to uh, top of door height. We're specifying uh, uh, ceramic tile and and. We're showing a uh, what we're specifying is at the at the corners of the ceramic tile. Instead of using a, a trim piece there, I usually use a bullnose trim tile. We use this uh, aluminum trim. <coughs> this isn't the exact profile. We'd use a, a bullnose profile, but what it does is it it gives you a very durable uh, corner there because that's a that's subject to a lot of uh, banging abuse, um, and it will stand up. Uh, and also, it, it saves a little money in the long run because you, you're not buying the trim tile. So it's a, it's a nice, nice system that comes with inside and outside corners and trim pieces. Um, you can also see the lockers here. And again, we're not, we're not suggesting colors here or anything. Uh, we'd probably go with something a little more uh, exciting than, than gray. but. Uh, we've got the double tier lockers with the with the slope top, and th these are uh, 18 inches wide, so they're they're wide they're big enough for uh, students to get a, a book bag <coughs> into, and they're um, e easily accessed. <coughs> uh, in the classroom itself, uh, you can see again more of the the uh, typical ACT and the indirect lighting. Um, 
painted gypsum board walls, but all of the all of the walls between classrooms have uh, have a second layer of gypsum board for sound isolation. Um, that's that's one of the things that uh, we get points for for mass chips for uh, um, acoustical performance, and that's. Uh, so that's that's the reason for that. We're also putting sound seals on the on the communicating doors. You don't see one here, but most of the classrooms have a communicating door from one to the other. That'll be gasketed and, and soundproofed. You can also see some some uh, plastic laminate paneling, uh, millwork, uh, open bookshelves along the outside wall, um, flooring. Um, we'll do the. Uh, a vinyl tile, I, I think that's been passed around already, VCT, every, everyone's familiar with that. But then the uh, window sills will be a, a Corian material. And, uh, these are a few samples of that. It's available in a, in a wide range of materials, it, both approximate natural stone or, uh, or other, other uh, patterns as well. <coughs> Excuse me. It is... Uh, we we use it because it's uh, it's durable. It's it's uh, it's not going to rot. It's not going to uh, break down. If 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 it gets scratched, it can be ground out. So it, no, it's uh, it's a good solution for sills. Um, gymnasium. Um, just a few things I'd like to point out here. We are specifying a wood floor, um, but it's a it's a floating wood floor. It's it's got a uh, it's got some built-in rebound to it. It's got pads underneath it, so it, it has some uh, resilience. Um, we are specifying uh, wall pads at the ends. Um, and then along this side, this would be a horizontal climbing wall that would be purchased under the FF&E. And up until about 14 feet, <coughs> which is this, this blue line here, uh, is a... Uh, is, the walls would be painted uh, block, painted CMU for uh, their their durability. Up up above that, which take a little less abuse, but still can get old <coughs> walls. Um, we're showing uh, high abuse resistant uh, gypsum wall board and metal studs, <coughs> um, less expensive than the than the gypsum board. This is an area that uh, I know Fontaine has made some uh, suggestions already, and we we'd like to. Uh, Revisit that with them and see see what they uh, uh, see what they propose. I know they had talked about the possibility of uh, load bearing CMU, and we can explore that. We also have these uh, motorized telescopic bleachers, and those would be uh, sized to to seat the entire student body, so they could about 14 rows high. They would pull out um, automatically um, with a keyed switch, and those would be plastic seats. Um, comfortable uh, <coughs> form seats. And then on this, wall, on this outside wall here, we also have some more of that uh, plas plastic uh, glazing, <coughs> which would be, uh, again, you it can be specified with a very uh, abuse resistant inner interface of that. You can, it's one of the nice features of that uh, uh, cow wall material that I passed around before. It's, it, you can specify the, the faces. Um, with diff varying degrees of light transmittance and, and uh, ab abuse resistance as well and fire, fire and flame retardants. Um, also in here, a motorized divider. We would build in uh, volleyball inserts for, uh, for games. Um, we'd have a scoreboard on this wall here with a controller uh, access in the floor. Um, and this, we'd also <coughs> have the uh, basketball backstops, not only the main court, but, but the uh, side courts too, and those would fold up and uh, out of the way. Um, <coughs> that covers pretty much the, uh, the interior. I, I think I, the one thing I didn't pass around was these are the, uh, this is a, a rubber stair tread riser that we we're proposing for the typical stair something you're probably familiar with from uh, the high school. Had good, we've had good, good experience with it. Ver again, a uh, variety of, uh, of textures and colors, uh, so it's a pretty, pretty uh, wide range of choices there. 
Um, that, that covers pretty much the interior. I think for the exterior materials, I'd like to do this again uh, uh, at a future meeting. Um, I can tell you that the, the exterior of the building primarily uh, is brick masonry. We have proposed a uh, precast concrete base. You can, you can make out a lot, this line along the bottom here. You may have seen it on the elevations. Uh, that's something we'd like to uh, discuss with the, with the uh, construction manager with Fontaine and see if that's something that um, they, have, they have concerns with either in terms of lead time or, or uh, installation. <coughs> um, there may be another material. There, there are other uh, cast stone materials that, that may work as well. But the uh, primary material is brick, brick veneer. Um, and then up above high again, where it's uh, not subject to abuse, we have some uh, metal paneling. Again, this is just the second floor. Does anyone, anyone have any questions? <coughs> uh, I got a couple. <laughs> the uh, entry mat that you had there, mm -hmm. um, it shows, you know, it has an abrasive quality to it, which is probably fine for getting dirt and everything off, but it's not very thick um, for water time or for, like, snow time when okay. uh, winter. That would be my concern with, you know, you <coughs> 560 kids traipsing in with boots on and everything else, dragging it in. That you probably want to be able to ca capture a little bit more water there. Well, we uh, do have... Uh, I mean, I think at the high school we actually have pedimats mm -hmm. in there, don't we, at the... The aluminum mats that you have the well, actually great in frame. Yeah, we have, we have water <coughs> it's a, yeah. a recessed mat, yeah, the, but it's a thicker mat than that one. It is a little thicker. What we see sometimes is is uh, for the winter months, they, they use the water hog mats further into the interior, mm. um, which would be an option. We could look at a at a pet -a mat. Uh, my experience with pet -a mat is they they don't remove. <clears throat> they don't remove as much water as, as uh, because it's such a short duration. Yeah. You're only on them for a few steps. So, you know, I, I found this, this uh, material to work pretty well in combination with, uh, with other mats uh, for the really, really bad times. The, uh, the other thing is that we have a pretty, pretty well-defined uh, outdoor paved area from the bus drop off to the uh, uh, to the entrances we don't have you know grass or areas where, where students are going to really mm. get into the, the the muck that sort of thing so I, um, but we could we could certainly look at a at a pet -a mat type okay. installation I was just curious I mean it just or a thicker <coughs> en entry mat mm -hmm. there it's just a, it just seems to be um, kitchen walls. You talked about the ceiling being scrubbable. What are you doing for the walls in the kitchen? Um, the walls in the serving line area would be ceramic tile, mm -hmm. but once you get back into the kitchen proper, we would use a uh, an FRP. Panel. Would you? Okay. It's it really you know it's yeah. it's like a restaurant type yeah. material. Right. It's you know it's textured. Uh, no, it's good and scrubbable and it's long lasting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The only other thing, I, I know you met with the school a number of times, but I was just surprised seeing two-tiered lockers, um, you know, that that's acceptable. I mean, we're, they're all singles right now, but they're all real narrow, but, I, you know, of course, you go to the singles, and I don't know if we have enough space to get 560 lockers in. We, we could. They'd be narrow, though. They, they, the biggest complaint we've heard is, is that the, the lockers are too narrow to get a book bag into. Mm -hmm. so, which is why I assume the preference for the for the double double tier. <coughs> um, they're not they're not tremendously high, and and again, you know, in an elementary school, we probably wouldn't wouldn't go with the double tier, but in a in a uh, middle school, really seem, it it seems to work. I don't know if you comment on that, Mr. Gagnon. Well, I think the, the width is more important, really. Than yeah. Because they still, when they're narrow, students still have to wait for the person next to them to get whatever they get out of there. So if they can get in and out of there quickly, they're just going to have to, you know. Okay. So it'll, it'll you don't see any difficulty with one being over the other? I, I don't, because they're still going to have to wait. Because when they're, right now, because they're so narrow, 
and they can't get in to the locker next to it, so they're, they're still good. Any other questions, comments on the materials? Okay. So, good motion. <laughs> well, to, for the uh, submission of the next of uh, the DD package. That's uh, all you you love that stuff. <laughs> That's right there, right? Oh, yes. You want me to say that? <laughs> okay, I'll make the motion that the Auburn School Building Committee authorize Skanska USA Building Inc. and Lamarro Pagano Associates to submit the design development submission to the Massachusetts School Building Authority. This submission is contingent on the total construction budget not exceeding thirty-seven million seven hundred ninety-six dollars and seven hundred seven hundred and fifty pat. <laughs> Let me start that one over. Thirty-seven million seven hundred ninety-six thousand seven hundred and fifty-two dollars. That includes base contract work, ad alternates, and construction contingencies per the project funding agreement dated July twenty-fourth, two thousand thirteen. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> um, discussions? Questions? Now, I did run numbers quickly, figured out where they came from. This is, you're already assuming the, uh, the $300,000 deduction or reduction in for Fondane's fees, right? In this number? No, this is the original project. Uh, I, just did, I just ran the numbers quickly, and that's, I don't think so. It's all inside the original forty-four million five eleven, yes, yeah. but um, I just want to make sure I have the right numbers here. But that doesn't add; they don't add up to the, to the numbers I think it did. They would be the ones that you're adding up off the off that funding agreement. Furnishings, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. <coughs> All right. Any other questions? Comments? All right. Um, there's a motion. So, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? It's a vote. Um, next item, uh, there is some. It was brought up at the uh, September 24th meeting about some emergency shelter status of the, of the middle school um, and some requests that have been out there. We went back to the town to kind of talk about it and figure out what, what was going on here. I think there's a couple of op options. So a couple of quick updates. I did speak with um, Julie Jacobson. I also met with Adam Burney and Roger Bellhume with the emergency management director. So using the new middle school as a secondary shelter was a recommendation. They're both advisory boards, the DCG, which is the development coordinating group, and the LEMPC, the Local Emergency Management Planning Committee. Both had recommended um, that these uh, be designated as a secondary shelter. Um, they recognize that there is a cost to this. They are not looking to have a negative impact or take away from the educational programming, but wanted to bring it forward. And I know Mr. Moore has some more information as well. So we, we looked at uh, two options for the for 
achieving the the, uh, the request to make this a an informal shelter. You, you've already got the shelter in place at the high school. You've got Red Cross agreements in place with that. This would be this would not be a formal shelter. It would it would it would provide at the request of the of the DCG um, abilities for cooking in the kitchen, which then incurs uh, running the ventilation systems. Um, it would include some some lighting, um, both at the kitchen cafeteria and also the uh, the shower and locker room areas. Um, it would it would operate the uh, uh, hot water heating system so that people could take showers and it would also provide some some heat in the uh, cafeteria area and, and, and other locker areas so it's it's more than just running the uh, uh, the pumps the hot water pumps that circulate hot water through the building that's that's something we normally do anyway um, this would also run fans for the HVAC unit, rooftop units, and actually move air through the, through the building, so you're actually heating those spaces. So we looked at, at two options. The first was was to uh, um, put all of the all of those features on a on a manual transfer switch. They would be on their own separate panel. There would be a manual transfer switch, and there would be an outdoor. Uh, NEMA type connector so that you could hook up to a mobile uh, trailer mounted generator in the event of an extended uh, outage um, and then you could run the kitchen the, the showers uh, those areas um, but you'd need a you'd need a separate generator for that um, and the cost of that would be for the infrastructure would be about thirty thousand dollars more than than you know what we would have as a, as the base uh, project um, and that would be for the infrastructure and then there would be the cost of the mobile generator which I did a quick check online and uh, for a 65 kW generator which is not as big as what you would need would be about thirty eight thousand dollars that's the biggest one I could find uh, but yeah that would I was gonna say that wouldn't be the school's cost that would be the town cost or whatever at that point the uh, that part <coughs> The, the other option would be to increase the size of the uh, emergency generator, and uh, to 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 do that, you would increase the generator size by about 100 kW. Right now, we're we're specifying a uh, 250 kW diesel generator, um, three phase, 277 volt, um, and that would be a cost of about fifty to sixty thousand dollars estimated. Um, my concern with option one, initially I thought that was a good idea. When I found, when I started looking at the numbers, seeing the cost of, of not only the uh, um, the infrastructure, but also the, the additional generator. Um, it exceeds the it exceeds the cost of the, of the second option, um, and and even though you may have the generator now, um, it, it's quite. I'd be concerned that that generator would be available in the event of a, uh, of, a of an emergency. You know, they generators are naturally hard to come by. For anybody who's, who's ever tried to buy one when the power goes out um, knows that they're they're hard to hard uh. to find. The uh, option two, you said the increase in the size of the generator would be 60, 70,000. What about all the... 50 to 60. What about all the infrastructure that goes along with that? No, that, that, would, be, that yeah. would be the... Uh, that would be included in that 50 to 60,000. There wouldn't, there wouldn't so be any more... So you're, only, you're saying the upcharge on the generator is only 20 to 30,000 because it's 30,000 for option one. So you're doing all that. You have to do all that put a transfer switch in and do all the infrastructure in terms of wiring up water heaters and all the other stuff so that they could run on the emergency power. No, you wouldn't do the same sort of infrastructure. You'd need to increase the size of the, fe the feeders to the, to, the, uh, to the equipment that's being powered up, but it wouldn't be the same level of uh, infrastructure as if you were going to go with the mobile generator option. Right. That one has has things like the outdoor, you know, yeah. that would have a separate connection. It it, it isolates those those uh, those loads from everything. So you you actually flip you 
you have a three position uh, uh, transfer switch. Is it still a manual transfer switch? It would be. A, it would be a manual transfer. Because yeah, that'd be switch. my concern. Is that long term? I mean, you yes. know, every every storm outage, you'd be running the whole building instead of right. just the life safety stuff or something. You need to run. So just just to long term. <clears throat> to uh, elaborate a little further on what we, the things that we normally put on the generator. There's the the life safety things, the lighting, that you that you're required required by by code for life safety to do. We also generally put on uh, things like the heating pump so that you, you're always circulating hot water through the building. And whether or not you're running all the fans too, you're, you're, you're preventing the system from freezing up. You have perimeter uh, radiation at the classroom, so you're getting some heat value from that. You may not want to occupy the building in that state, but you're keeping it from freezing. Um, we, we would normally put the, uh, the head-end equipment for your communications, your, your servers, your, your telephone system, um, you know, your security system, that sort of thing. You, you don't want that to go down, so we, we would put that sort of thing on, on uh, backup power. We'd also put your, your uh, kitchen cooler and freezer on backup power so you don't lose all your food if you're out, out of power for a couple of days. Um, that's 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 typically done. These these would be additional loads that we're talking about. Now, uh, is this something we need to factor into the DD budget right now? If we I, I, I recommend that you include it in in this rather than uh, try and add it later on. It's it's always easier to to include it now and take it out later if it's a, as a value value engineering item, if, mm -hmm. if need be, um, than to do it the, the opposite way. For the chair, I have a question. Yeah. Is, is this something that they're telling us we need to do, Mary Ellen, or is this something that they're asking us to do? Both of these boards are advisory, so they recommend it only. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me that we do this. You know, we're making a spare shelter for a building that's only five years old. It's pretty crazy that has all this stuff already. But that's just my opinion. We do also have the current middle school designated as a secondary shelter um, as well. What, what would be the reason for a secondary shelter? The, the concern that was raised is should there ever be a flood at the high school and they could not access it so to have a secondary shelter for that purpose. And I understand the flood control has been much improved since 55. Uh, that the possibility of that happening again is very remote. Mm -hmm. So if that was their only concern for secondary, we could go up and use the second floor. You can't get there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any design cost for this generator? No. Any other questions, um, comments? I think for the moment, Eric describes that it's easy to put in now and easy to take out later rather than not put it in now and try to put it in later. So I suggest you take his advice and let us think about it more. Who's going to pay for it? Joe, you had more. Do you see this as something that would ever even be used or needed? I mean, you're involved with the, the schools more than we are. <laughs> Um, God forbid, no, I'm hoping it would be needed. Um, <coughs> I would say that, that while we're building this now, if we can explore the cost of it. Um, I mean, the existing middle school that we have now is a secondary shelter. Um, uh, that's identified. Um, so then we'd have three. Then technically you would have three. Right, just, okay. Eric? Just, 
Thank you. Uh, just to supplement what, what Mary Ellen said in response to why, why this would, what, what would be the rationalization for this. The, the other argu argument that I've heard of rationalization was that you don't have anything in this part of town that's, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a shelter. Both your other shelters are, are located at, at the high school, basically at the high school. I understand, you know, the way I feel about it is we've been approved to build a school on an emergency shelter. The town's put money for the school. If they want an emergency shelter, then it should go back and the town can put the money in for it and people can vote to have it put in. That's what I said. Who's going to pay for it? I don't think it should. Well, the, the town's going to pay for it. It's like that. Yeah. It's not going to be a problem for the building committee. Well, no. Yeah, the costs are. They're asking. Yeah, right now they. Yeah, yeah. They're not. They're not handing us the sixty or seventy thousand dollars to upgrade no, but the. If they don't, if they don't hand us, if they don't appropriate the money, then it goes away. That's the way I hear it, Eric. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just goes away. Can we can yeah. we put this in as an ad alternate? What it would cost overall? Well, I don't think we can add to the ad alternates no. now because we're it's, mm -hmm. it's already done as we have the two ad alternates listed so far, you know, in the funding agreement. Mm -hmm. So it would have had to have been done back at the uh, last stage, mm -hmm. schematic design. Just just to clarify, at, at the moment we we don't have we don't have this built into the project. No. We, we're just covering the, the, you know, the life safety and the items that I, that I described. So, I mean, what the MSBA is going to see is a 250 kW generator and, a, and the normal life safety stuff on there. You're not going to change all the documents in time between now and next Wednesday or Thursday. We could. We could change that document. <laughs> okay. It's going to be complicated. Yeah. I mean, do I do I think we're going to have to see savings on the thirty-seven million? Probably. Um, you know, is it going to cover this? Hopefully, that and a lot more. But I, I don't know. I would have liked to come up while we were going around uh, selling the whole project and having concerns about it, so it could have been put in earlier in the job. But I, I don't know. I don't think it's going to jeopardize us. I, I mean, that's one concern. I mean, but I think you know, at most MSB, if they find it, they're just going to say it's 100 percent the town's cost. Exactly. That's all. Yeah. You can have anything you want as long as you pay for it. That would throw that would go into the town. So. Well, then, yeah. I mean, that we. I mean, we could. I mean, uh, we could approve something or uh, the addition to it. I mean, I suppose in a. Uh, and make it contingent on that either it's you know in fund savings on the uh, the you know the budget side and or that the town funds it another way or something. I don't, I don't know. If we could do that. How do you get money into the project? This is other money. Right? Uh, it's not unlike the high school with the no. infusion of money that uh, came in to <coughs> increase the size of the gym and stuff uh, from outside private source. You know that. You know, came in as a you know separate funding source on that. Do we have a right to just go back to the town and tell them it's too late for this building and they could, should put it into a future building? Certainly. You know, in the, <laughs> the design stage. So as Mary I, Ellen said, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's that a, might be our best option right now that they should look at putting it into a you know a building in the future. We just built a shelter a few years ago. I'm assuming that's going to be there for a long time and. You know, as the town goes forward with some of its building, maybe they should look at making another building well, in the they future. A, they have a second. They have a second secondary building. now. Yeah, they yeah. still and it's still there. But like Mary Ellen says, uh, one of the there. reasons was nothing this side of town. Uh, down there on and that's certainly on high ground. You're not going to have to worry about it being flooded out up there. I think it's a nice idea, but it costs money. Yeah. Right. You know, and going forward, whatever happens with that building, you know, whatever becomes of it, 
the it's, state it should look into the plans that that yeah. right that's already dedicated it's already there that's right yep. that's, that's as far as i'm concerned it's a closed matter yes. <laughs> eric is it simply a an increased size yeah, in the generator I, is it simply a, an increased size in well, the it's, generator it's, it's no it's a little more involved to the second option yes the uh, the feeders get get larger, yeah, yeah. so it's not just the. You cost have to have a manual tra transfer yeah. switch in there. You have to, you know, they're just going to need to be exercised and stuff. Why don't we take a Why don't we take a vote? Yeah, it, it, it's well, also a maintenance thing. You, yeah. you just brought up the ex. You know, the larger that that generator is, the more it costs to exercise it. The more it costs right. to maintain it. So right. it's a long term. You know, it's yeah. not only. Well, that was my concern about the certain, especially the transfer switch. Yeah. You know, if it wasn't manual, then every time you went into a power failure, you'd be, you know, putting the whole school into, and it'd be, you know, long-term costs in terms of fuel costs and everything, but... What does administration feel? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you could probably care less one <laughs> way or the other one, because it doesn't impact the... Uh, I appreciate the safety concerns. I want to make sure we have ample money for the educational program. Um, yeah. I mean, I think something that has just been suggested, we do have an alternate shelter, the middle school, and there will be some renovations to that. So if, if it's the decision of the SBC to not to support this for the new middle school, we would have to, we could look to see and if any upgrades were required for the current middle school as part of those renovations. Amen. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we bypass this. I second that. All right. Any other discussions? Any other motions? Counter, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Present. All those opposed? Present. Okay. <laughs> um, abstain. Could be like a Washington <laughs> politician. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay. Uh, next item is uh, approval of uh, regular monthly invoices. We have two in here, one from Lamoureux and one from Skanska. We just need to make sure the Skanska one doesn't have lunch on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's nice one>. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion that we pay <coughs> invoice number 1207-1309 dated 930-2013 from Lamoureux and Pagano for the sum of $112,500. I'll second it. Any discussions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Yep. The vote. <coughs> we also have another Lemo Pagano bill. Oh. <coughs> Invoice number 1207-1309. Part of the other one. Why is it in two parts? <coughs> Dated 9-30-2000. In the amount of Three thousand four hundred and ten dollars. Oh no! It's a yeah. yeah it's Actually, the uh, the invoice thirteen oh nine is yeah. the total is one fifteen nine ten. Yeah. yeah. The total for that is one hundred and fifteen thousand nine hundred and ten dollars. I'll second it again. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Sorry. We we've already voted the hundred and twelve. And you, no, now you're throwing it on the uh, no. 150. No, no. Did you cancel the first one? It was yes. Uh, never voted on. Oh, yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Okay. All right. We'll have to rescind the first vote. Oh, yes, yes. you, you can't just go with the no, 3,410? Okay. That's the add on. Okay. <laughs> uh, with an additional sum of $3,410 from the original. To be, yes. Go with the original one hundred and twelve thousand five hundred. Second. Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? That's a vote. <laughs> nope, not that one. That was extra services. What's that? That was extra services. We already went over that, yeah. I'll make a motion that we pay Skanska's invoice number 1311838-PDS-11924-19, dated 
October 4th, 2013, in the amount of $18,645. I'll second it. Good. Any, any discussions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those Aye. opposed? The vote. Um, Dale, I know you're down, down a man, and I hope Paul's uh, recovering well. Yeah. But uh, our, the overall uh, budget update against the uh, project, uh, total project funding. He usually updates is you know this, the sheet to show where we, you know what what's spent to date so far on there and everything. It's not in here. Oh okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so next time. Yeah. Because okay. I know he's out for a couple months here. So. All right. Um, Mr. Chair, I'm making a motion to go into a short recess. Uh, the recess is needed for, uh, we've got to get the meeting minutes printed up um, for uh, for the vote, for the uh, submission to the MSBA next week. I second um, that motion. And then come back out and uh, we'll approve the meeting minutes and that way they'll have the approved meeting minutes of the vote for them to be able to submit to uh, MSBA next week. So all those in favor of a uh, short recess while we print up the meeting minutes? Aye. 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 All those opposed? And in recess. All right. Uh, coming out of recess here. Um, before we get to the meeting minutes, there's uh, one housekeeping thing I just wanted to get uh, here. Um, get a letter from Julie Jacobson. It's for all town boards, commissions, and everything. Uh, committee members, there's a informational session. It's not mandatory. It's a training session. Um, Thursday, November 14th at 6 p.m., the uh, Board of Selectmen's uh, room in Town Hall. Um, and this is to go over the Open Meeting Law, uh, State Ethics Commission regulations, and uh, Robert's Rules of Order, and other pertinent information. So if you want to get more educated on that stuff, that's there for you. Uh, what date was that, please? That is uh, Thursday, November 14th at 6 p.m. But yeah, board of selectmen room. Yep. <laughs> okay. So uh, Mary Ellen passed out our meeting minutes from tonight. Uh, take a motion to approve these. What? Sir. Okay. <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as presented. I'll second it. All right. Any discussions, comments, concerns? After having a look through them. Scan it if they need it. Well, it, Mr. Chairman, the only, yeah. the only comment I have is on this discussion we had about this emergency stuff. It says that Mr. Murray made a motion. To bypass the issue, which ends there. Then what's in the second that we voted on? Seven. The right. vote. The vote. Is it should be seconded by Mr. Westerland. That's in my notes here. I apologize. Okay. It was oh. um, approved unanimously by one abstention. Okay. Thank you. Second to uh, you on Skanska. Second page. Did I think you did. Yep. 
Yeah, the uh, the scan scan voice line. Yeah, it's seconded by Mr. and then no name. Okay. Mr. Gibbard? Yes. Yes. Gibbard. comments? If not, uh, all those in favor of approving the invoices, at, I mean the, the meeting minutes as amended? Aye. Uh, aye. aye. All aye. those opposed? That's a vote. And the last thing, any other issues that people want to bring up that we need to bring up? I make a motion with you, Jim. Then we oh, take the I'll second that, though. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's adjourned.